From this lecture, we will start biasing of transistors. The analysis of transistor as an amplifier requires the knowledge of both DC and AC response of the system. We can do DC and AC analysis of a transistor separately, but the parameters chosen in DC analysis will affect the AC response and the vice versa is also true. Once the desired DC current and voltage levels are defined, we can construct a network that will establish the desired operating point. So we have to construct a network to obtain the desired operating point and for this purpose we use biasing. So what is biasing? Biasing is the process in which we apply external DC voltages to select the appropriate operating point. These networks are called as biasing networks and in this chapter we have to analyze different types of biasing networks. We already know the three operating regions of a transistor. The first one is the active region, the second one is the saturation region and the third one is the cutoff region. To use transistor as an amplifier, transistor is biased in active region. This is something we already know. To use transistor as an amplifier, transistor must operate in active region. We already know what is biasing. Biasing is the process in which we apply external DC voltages to select the appropriate or proper operating point. So we need to bias the transistor or apply the external DC voltages in a way so that the operating point of the transistor remains in active region. Throughout our analysis in this chapter, we will use NPN common emitter transistor. We will use NPN common emitter transistor because of high current amplification in case of common emitter transistor. This is the common emitter configuration using NPN transistor. VBB and VCC are the biasing potentials. RB is the resistance connected in series with the base and RC is the resistance connected in series with the collector. You can see emitter is common to the input side and to the output side. The input voltage, the input voltage is VBE, the input current is IB, the output voltage, the output voltage is VCE and the output current is IC. We want to amplify the weak input signal faithfully. By faithfully, we mean the amplification of input signal without any distortion. If we apply, if we apply an input signal here, then we want the amplified input signal here without any distortion. For example, if the input signal is sinusoidal, if the input signal is sinusoidal, then we want the amplified output signal to be sinusoidal. We don't want any portion of this waveform to be clipped. This is what we mean by the faithful amplification of the input signal. The next thing is the operating point. The next thing is the operating point. We are talking about transistors and transistors are two port devices. So we have two types of operating points. The first one is the input operating point and we can define input operating point as the coordinates obtained by the intersection of load line with the transistor input characteristics for the particular value of output voltage VCE. For this purpose, we need to apply the KVL in the input loop and we also have to draw the input characteristics and then we will draw the load line and the point of intersection between the load line and the input characteristics for particular output voltage will give us the input operating point. So I will quickly I will quickly draw the input characteristics of the common emitter transistor. We already know how to draw the input characteristics of the common emitter transistor. This is VBE in volts and this is IB, the base current, in microamps. It is similar to the forward bias characteristics of PN junction diode. Initially, the current is zero then it increases slowly like this 
and once VBE is greater than the barrier potential the current increases rapidly like this so this is the input characteristics of common emitter transistor and I'm considering silicon diode because of this the barrier potential is equal to 0 0.7 volts now we will apply the KVL in the input loop so we have plus VBB plus VBB minus IBRB drop across this resistance is IBRB so we have minus IBRB minus VBE minus VBE equal to 0 and by using this equation we will draw the load line in this equation you can see VBE is the x-axis and IB is the y-axis and to draw the load line we need two points let's say first point is P1 and this point is having x coordinate equal to 0 and we have to find out the y coordinate in the second point point P2 the y coordinate is 0 and we have to find out x coordinate this means in the first point in the first point VBE is equal to 0 and we have to find out value of IB we can easily calculate the value of IB using this equation when VBE is equal to 0 IB is simply equal to VBB divided by RB so the Y coordinate is equal to VBB divided by RB for the first point in the second point Y coordinate is 0 this means IB the base current is 0 and by using this equation VBE is equal to VBB so the X coordinate is equal to VBB for the second point and by using these two points we can easily plot the load line the first point P1 is having the coordinates 0 X coordinate is 0 and the Y coordinate is VBB divided by RB this is point P1 and this is point P2 having the coordinates VBB 0 I will join the two points and the obtained line is the load line and the point of intersection is the input operating point we can easily find out the coordinates of input operating point the X coordinate is VBEQ the X coordinate is VBEQ and the Y coordinate the Y coordinate is IBQ the Y coordinate is IBQ so these are the coordinates of input operating point for particular output voltage VCE1 if we increase the output voltage the curve will shift to the right and if we decrease the output voltage the curve will shift to the left you can see we have new operating points this is Q1 and this operating point is Q2 we can also change the operating point by changing the resistance RB slope of this curve slope of this curve is minus 1 by RB and if we increase RB the slope will decrease if we increase RB the slope will decrease and this will be the new load line and you can see the operating point is now changed and if you decrease RB the slope will increase and the new operating point will shift to this point so this is all for input operating point now we will move to the output operating point in case of output operating point the intersection of load line with the transistor output characteristics for particular value of base current IB gives the operating point this is the output characteristics of common emitter transistor and to find out the output operating point we need to draw the load line I will use KVL in the output loop and we have VCC minus ICRC minus VCE equal to 0 and by using this equation we can easily find out coordinates of two points we need to repeat the same process as we did in case of input load line when VCE is equal to 0 when VCE is equal to 0 
the collector current IC is equal to VCC divided by RC and when IC is equal to 0 VCE is equal to VCC now we can easily plot we can easily plot the load line this point here is having coordinates equal to 0 VCC by RC and this point here is having the coordinates equal to VCC 0 now I will join the two points and the obtained line is the load line and the point of intersection is the output operating point I am considering this intersection point instead of this 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 and this intersection points because we have to consider the particular base current and the base current is IBQ which we have obtained in the last step the base current was IBQ so the operating point is this point and we can easily obtain we can easily obtain the coordinates of the operating point the x coordinate is equal to VCEQ and the y coordinate is equal to ICQ Q in the symbol represents the operating point or the QSN point so this is all you have to do in case of output operating point and you can clearly see the operating point will change if we change the base current if we increase the base current then the operating point will shift to this point and if we decrease the base current the operating point will shift to this point we can also change the operating point by changing the resistance RC the slope the slope is equal to minus 1 by RC the slope is negative and if we increase RC the load line will change and we have a new load line like this and the operating point will shift to this point and if we decrease if we decrease RC the load line will change because of increase in slope and this is the new operating point setting of proper operating point is basic thing for amplification of weak signals I will explain the reason for this I will explain why setting of operating point is very important in this case you can see the operating point is in the middle is almost in the middle of the load line and this is important because if operating point is near to the saturation region or to the cutoff region we will not have the distortionless output signal let's try to understand this thing in detail I will paste the output characteristics of the common emitter transistor we will analyze two cases in the first case this is the load line and in the second case this is the load line let's say this load line is load line 1 and this load line is load line 2 in case of first load line the point of intersection between the load line and the output characteristics for the particular base current is Q1 and in this case the operating point is Q2 the value of output voltage at this point is equal to VCC the supply voltage now we will plot the output voltage for the two cases in the first case the amplified output voltage will have waveform like this and we already know the output voltage the output voltage can be equal to or less than the supply voltage but here in this case you can see the output voltage is greater than the supply voltage VCC so this is not possible and this portion of the waveform will clip off and the output voltage is having distortion in the same way if we analyze the second case if we analyze the second case and plot the output waveform plot the output waveform you can see you can see negative portion of the waveform is clipped why negative portion of the waveform is clipped because this is the maximum value of the current and the waveform cannot have the current more than this value because of this the negative portion of the waveform is clipped and we again have distortion in the output signal 
So you can see when operating point is near to the cutoff region, the positive portion of the waveform is clipped and when operating point is near to the saturation region, the negative portion of the waveform is clipped. Because of this, the operating point must be selected in the center of the active region so that we can have the maximum swing without distortion. For example, for example, if this is the load line, then this is the operating point, let's say it is Q. And in this case, if we plot the amplified output signal, then you can see, then you can see there is no distortion and we have distortion free amplified output signal. So this is the faithful amplification of the input signal and because of this operating point must remain in the center of the active region. Once we set the proper operating point, it should not shift because of change in the collector current. Once the operating point is fixed, it should not change with change in the collector current and the collector current may change because of two reasons. The first reason is change in beta value, is change in beta value. We already know collector current IC is equal to beta times IB and if beta, if beta increases, this implies the collector current IC will also increase. Now how beta increases in case of transistors? Beta of two transistors are different. Having same beta for two transistor is very difficult and if we replace the transistor with other transistor, beta also changes. This is very important point. Beta value of two transistors are rarely same. The next thing is change in temperature. The next thing is change in temperature. I C the collector current IC is equal to beta times IB plus beta plus 1 ICBO. ICBO is the leakage current and this current only depends on the minority charge carriers and the minority charge carriers only depends on the temperature. If temperature increases, minority charge carriers will increase and also the leakage current. So if temperature increases, this implies the reverse saturation current will increase and when reverse saturation current increases from this equation, you can see the collector current also increases. And from the characteristics curve, you can see if IC changes, the load line will change and also the operating point. This is all for this lecture. See you in the next one.